Welcome back everyone to the beautiful episode of React with WordPress and in the previous video we learned about creating the form in this video we're going to go ahead and handle the on change event of the form and when the form is submitted we'll go ahead and uh, hit the WordPress REST API for create, creating a post so that will create the post from our front-end application that request goes to the back-end server of WordPress and it's going to create a post over here. So let's try to do that. Let's come back. Uh, so we've got the submit button so far. We're also going to handle the loading bit. So we're going to say that, um, yep, great. We're going to check if we already have loading, true. If we do, we're just going to get the image tag and we'll put the loader there. So we're just going to put the loader. We already created one, I think. So I'm just going to use that. Come on. So loader. Okay, haven't we created it already? Okay, let me just check that. Where do we have the loader? You must have had in the login loading loader. Yes, we did. Where is it? It's in the loader GIF, right? So we need to import it first. So let's import it loader from um, here. You go. Awesome. Okay, so I'm just going to use this loader. Okay, and then just put the all test loader, class name. So let's give it a class name of loader because we've already added some class for some styles for it. So it's just going to use that. Okay. So we've got our form ready, and the next thing we need to do is basically handle the form submit. Okay. So before we do that, we need to handle the uh, on change event. So when the user goes ahead and enters a value over here it's going to be taking care of this handle input change what this is going to do is just uh, set the value of the state to the new one so we'll get the event over here so we'll say event and i'll say event dot target dot name and this will come into an array because then we can uh, reuse it we don't have to write a separate on change handler for everything. Okay, we can just reuse it. Even dot target. Yep, you guessed it right. It's even dot target dot value. Perfect. Okay, so that's that. Now, if I check the start state. The start state. Let's try to go ahead and enter the values and see what we get. Oops, something went wrong. Set state of undefined. Okay, what's wrong here? So we've got the title, we've got the content, and inside of the state, we have the object, we have event.target.name, and the value will be event.target.value. We have the on change event handler that we have applied on the input elements. So what is missing? Let me check. All right. Well, the reason why we're getting this error is because uh, we are not using the arrow functions we're using just the ES5 functions. So we have to bind this. So this is not referring to this class over here. This is referring to the environment that's just created in. So to solve this, either we bind this over here inside of the constructor, or we just go ahead and convert this into arrow function. I think converting this into arrow function would be much simpler. Let's do that. We should have done this on the first place, but that's okay. Similarly, let's do the same for over here as well. In fact, not component did mount. This is not required. Let this be the way it is. Okay, so that's that. And um, let's give it a semicolon. We've got the event here. And now we should get rid of the error. Let's get rid of that. 
Awesome, that's great. Let's type something. And now we can see that when we type over here, we have this value being changed. If we change the content, we have the content being changed. Awesome, that works great. Now all we have to do is just handle the form submit. So we'll say event dot prevent default because we don't want the default submission of the form to take place. Okay. And then the next thing we're going to do is this dot set state loading is equal to true. We'll first set the loading to be true. Okay. So when someone hits submit, it's, the loading is going to start and it's only going to finish the stop. Uh, in fact, it's going to finish loading and this icon will be removed once the request is complete. So once the post request is complete, we're going to set the loading to uh, back to false. Okay, let's do that. Next up is we need the form data. So we're going to say const form data. We can name it anything that you want. I'm just keeping it as form data. What all do we need? So we need title. So we'll get this dot state dot title from the state. From the state. Okay. And then we need the content. This dot state dot content. And then we need the status because we want to publish it. So let's give it its publish. So we got the form data. All we have to do is just make a post request. Now, we need to have our site URL, WordPress site URL. Okay, so we'll say const WordPress site URL is equal to, so let's put that into a config file instead of keeping it here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and create a config file. So we already created one, so this will, uh, now we are putting the site URL over here because we're going to be reusing it over and over again. So just consider this as wordpress.com. So if your site is, your WordPress site is on www.xyz.com, so you're gonna put that over here. So I have a local, I'm using a local WordPress install and my local WordPress install is on this URL, which as you can see here, because it's under the subdirectory. So that's why I put my site URL. But this is basically a WordPress site URL. Okay. So I'm just going to import client config from client config. And I'm just going to use that here. Okay. So I'm just going to say client config dot site URL. Okay. Awesome. And next we need the auth token. So const auth token is equal to I think this dot state dot auth token. In fact, uh, we really didn't need to, you know, put that in component in mount. I wasn't really required, I believe, for now at least. Let's get rid of this token thing from here. We don't need that unnecessary stuff. So we can just get the token from the local storage over here when we need it. There's no need to get that information beforehand. Okay, so let's just name this as auth token. Okay, so we're getting that from the local storage. I just showed that to you a while ago so that we have the token inside of the local storage right here. We're just pulling that off. Okay, pulling that out. And we just need to make a post request. So I'll say post request to create a post. So we have Xeos that we have downloaded already, installed already. So we just use Xeos from Xeos. We could use fetch also because fetch also has the option of uh, post requests, but unfortunately Internet Explorer doesn't support that. So we're just gonna stick to Xeos. Makes life simpler. And then this is gonna need the site URL. So if you look at the WordPress REST API, you can see it needs the example.com, which is a site URL, and then wp.json, and, and then wpv2 and post. So let's just copy this for now. And let's just paste it here. We want to replace this part, which is a site URL, from our own site URL. So I'm going to use the dollar sign so that I can insert a variable over here. And we already got the WordPress site URL over here, which is inside of the client config. 
So later on, I'm going to change this to client-config-example.com, which you can later on rename to this one because you shouldn't idly submit your client config onto GitHub. So you shouldn't know about your site URL. Okay. Great. So we've got the post, and the next thing we need is the form data. So we've already got the form data, and the most final thing we need is the headers. So we'll say headers, then we'll say content type, content type, and content type will be application JSON, and then authorization, authorization. And then we need to put that as a bearer token. So we'll just say bearer. I don't know who that bearer is. I'm gonna kill him if I find him. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, so we just need the token. So auth token. Okay, awesome. So we've got our headers ready. All we have to do is just you know get the response. So it's a, it gives us a promise. So I'm just going to use that. So I'll say then. And when it gets resolved, it's gonna give me a response. And inside of this response, then I can do a set state. This dot set state, and I can say loading is false. So loading becomes false. Post created becomes true. Post created uh, res dot data dot id because I think I we will get the post id. Okay, so if you've got the post ID, then we're going to get that, otherwise we'll set to false. Okay, so that's why double. Okay, so if it has a value, brilliant is going to give me that. If it isn't, then whatever is going to, is going to convert that to false. Okay, and then we're going to get the message. So rest.data.id, if that is present, then that means the message will be new post created else blank nothing okay so we've got that next up is we catch any errors if we have if we have any errors then we'll handle errors and we'll say this dot set state we'll set the loading to again true sorry false because we done that means that the quest is already complete and then we're going to set the message to be error dot response response dot data dot message. Okay, what we also want to do is basically just console what we get in response. So just put that here is res. There we go. I'm just going to go ahead and do an inspect element. Go back. Submit. There we go. So loading becomes false. We've got an error. Check network. Post request. In the response, I get a code saying that content title and excerpt are empty. And there you go. You can see now that we get a message also, right? So of course, we didn't get a warning over here because it's failed, right? So we need to look for the error here. So error. Let's try one more time. So let's try to submit. Now you can see that you've got the error. Request failed with status code 400. So I want the error.response.data. And let's see what we get inside of it. Let's try one more time. Submit, error, you can see code is empty content, status, message is content, title, except are empty, and that's what we are setting. We're setting the message equal to message in the state. And as we already know, down at the bottom, we are checking if it contains a message. If the post is not created, then make it a red and go ahead and show the message, whatever the message is. Okay. Um, right. And uh, now let's try to put all of the information. So I'm going to do an inspect element, put that on the side, and say new. Okay, my superb 
post my content this is just still being displayed let's submit it there you go now you get the response A new post created why is it red I'll just check that so we've got the data we've got the entire post available we have got the author ID as well right so you've got all of that okay great isn't that wonderful brilliant so post rest.data.id this is the post ID so why did it not get set where are we checking that oh oops this needs to be post created and not create yep there you go and if you check go back to your dashboard and check just refresh there you go you can see my superb post one minute ago right and now let's try to create one more time so my new post content stop submit and there you go now you have green and if you go back to home you can see this post is created you try to read more you can see this all of that it's got all of that information right go back to dashboard and there you go you can create a new post and that's awesome okay last but not the least you need to take care of the uh, markup because sometimes what happens is that uh, the error that you're going to get will contain some of the HTML uh, from the response so you need to handle that as well so what you really need to do is basically uh, go ahead and uh, use a function create a function called create markup it's going to take data and then inside of that is going to return another function okay and this is going to be HTML data you can also use the um, HTML data and then you can use this create markup okay and you can put that in the dangerously set HTML so if you go down here we go right in the message so instead of putting that inside of the div how we do it is we just wrap it in a closing tag and over here we'll just say dangerously set inner HTML and then we'll say this dot create mockup and we'll just put message inside of this okay you can use DOM purify also but then you'll have to you know install that package and use it you, know, you can do it this way or you can use DOM purify as well so whenever you have the uh, HTML markup being rendered then uh, you know as a message and not just as a string uh, then in that case you can use this dangerously set HTML okay awesome great um, that's all right so I think that's all about this for this episode in the next episode we would probably want to look at how we create the custom endpoints and then do the validation not to mention there are some validation we need to take care of for example if he tries to land on this page if a user tries to you know fiddle with your uh, you know token and changes it or something and tries to log in we should be able to actually validate that before showing many post content so currently we're not showing anything critical to him anything that's private it's just creating posts which is fine however later on when you are actually showing some content to him which should only be shown to him then we're going to check first by sending a validation request to our server whether it's an authenticated user or not so we're going to send the auth token in the headers and validate it and if everything is okay brilliant we show him the content otherwise we, we redirect him uh, back to the home page or we just log him out okay so awesome so i hope you did like the video if you did please give a thumbs up uh, if you want to support my work, you can just, you know, star this repo and subscribe to my channel as well. And do follow me on Twitter as well. My Twitter handle ID is Imran8sayan. Okay, see you then. Take care. Bye-bye.